Okay, so let's go. Welcome to Super Cable Boy Any Percent. So Super Cable Boy is a precision platformer, much like a Super Meat Boy or a Celeste. And it has this nice retro style to it. Uh, you play as this Game Boy-like character, and you have to plug into the outlet at the end of every level to progress to the next one. And the game has this computer-related theme going on. So right now we are in the first world, it's called Sleep Mode. And Sleep Mode is the tutorial world where we learn how to move around, how to jump, how to wall jump. And we learn not to touch these um, black pulsating walls because they will kill us. And yeah, this is one of these games where you will die a lot, but it doesn't really matter. You will respawn pretty much instantly at the start of a level, and the levels are short enough that, you know, it's not frustrating. But uh, tech-wise, it's just about timing our jumps here and uh, making sure the cable enters um, the goal in an optimal way. So, you know, just micro-optimization, not much to, to explain for now. I just did a corner boost here. This one is pretty hard to do, but it really does not save much. Uh, cutscenes are significantly sped up here because we enabled speedrun mode in the settings. But uh, we are in the final cutscene of the first world where we meet the glitch. And it's all Cable Boy stream right now. But the glitch causes a kernel panic, which is a system crash. We can quit out, by the way, here and it will count as the level being completed for some reason. Um, but yeah, we witnessed the, the glitch causing a kernel panic, and we Cable Boy is like, I have to warn Mr. Sri Hanky about this. Mr. Sri Hanky is Cable Boy's mentor, I guess. It's not really clear, but that's what I make out of it. Um, but yeah, he lives in the cloud, and so to reach the cloud, we are going to have to climb the Tower of Hanoi, which is where we are right now. So, Tower of Hanoi, you might or might not recognize the computer-related theme. Uh, but yeah, you might have noticed these um, rice balls floating around. They are optional collectibles called onigiris. And um, they don't do anything. You can just collect them if you want more change. There are 184 of them to collect throughout the game. They can get really, really hard to collect, but in any percent, we don't really care at all about them. You just uh, collect the ones that are in our way, but we we won't. We don't have to collect any. Um, so obviously, Tower of Hanoi levels are pretty vertical, and so it's mostly about optimizing wall jumps. Oops, wrong way here. Uh, I'm going to go for a trick here. I missed it, it's fine. Uh, but this is the final level of the Tower of Hanoi already. Now we are reaching the cloud. And so obviously the cloud is full of these fluffy clouds. Right? Makes sense. And uh, also these bouncing clouds. The bouncing clouds... Um, once you touch them, you cannot jump out of them. You have to wait for them to bounce you up. Automatically. And um, we hate them. We hate them because they are so inconsistent. Basically, they can fling you up with uh, different height every time for no reason. Even the dev doesn't know why. Um, but yeah, they, sometimes they won't give you enough height to clear stuff and there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes they will also make you fall off for no reason. Uh, good times, good times. But anyways, I wanted to tell you about a guide I made for the speedrun. So it's all available on GitHub. It's a collection of videos for every level of the game. So every level of the game has usually several strats that you can see in a video showing how to complete the level uh, in an optimized way. And every strat has an estimated difficulty, estimated time of completion. and. Um, and yeah, it's all available for you to browse if you're interested. It's, uh, as I said, on GitHub. Yeah, I know this is not how to use GitHub, but... <laughs> thank you, GitHub, for letting me upload 600 videos on your platform anyways. Um, but yeah, we are already reaching the end of 
the cloud. Uh, this is the last level before we meet Mr. Srihanki. And, um, and yeah, um, Mr. Srihanki. Srihanki in Japanese means rice cooker. So, yes, that's why. Uh, he's responsible for the onigiris actually. And he's gonna tell us that we need to defeat the glitch before it causes a kernel panic. And to do that, we need uh, the power of four cartridges. And the first one is right here. And the cartridges give us new abilities. We can put out here. And uh, we enter this level again that we already went through, but we are going to a different exit because some of these levels have several exits. And as you noticed, we now have the power to use the cable as a hook. Which is uh, which was given to us by the cable cart, and so our movement is gonna be based around that, obviously, for the next part. And now we have entered the assembly, which is uh, the fourth world. And uh, the assembly is um, obviously based around uh, using the cable, and it. it introduces us to new types of block like uh, this conveyor belts blocks um, but they don't really matter too much uh, what we are trying to do here is optimize uh, the way we move with the cable which is done through several ways um, i'm not going to explain it too much depth because it's really complicated but you can speed things up by grabbing surfaces at a certain distance and also by jumping at the right moment and this will save us between 1 and 2 seconds per level basically uh, this level in particular is really heavy on optimization you have to avoid landing on any of these platforms stuff like that you know it's micro optimizations that uh, make the difference when you combine them this is another one of these levels where we are going to uh, go to another exit when we collect the next cartridge. Whoops. Okay, it's fine. And uh, in this upcoming level, we are going to use advanced cable jump techniques to skip through most of the level. Uh, we are not supposed to master this kind of jumps right now, but uh, we can use that to our advantage. And um, we are going to come up to an intersection where we can go one of two possible paths. The two possible paths are called a AX and AY. And so this is a level we are going to the left. Uh, the left is the AY path. So AX is themed around pistons that uh, you know push you around, uh, block your path, stuff like that. And uh, we are not going to see any of them in the any person category. But uh, AY is based around these moving platforms. And uh, AY uh, has less levels and uh, also the levels are faster. So this is why we, we use this path and not the other one. And here we use a very complicated skip that uh, skips having to wait for the platforms to move around. Uh, unfortunately, on this one, we cannot do that. We have to wait for the platform to go to the other side. And uh, at some point, we can take off right here. But yeah, we have to wait a bunch still. Uh, whoops, I failed it. Okay, it's fine. I was supposed to reach for the goal here. Uh, this one works in similar ways. We have to wait for a bit and then we can take off. And... <laughs> okay. Um... So normally I'm supposed to go all the way to the end without having to wait for the platform. Okay, cool. Almost missed it here. And this is the first boss, because this game has boss fights. But uh, he's a nice guy, he understands that we are in a hurry, and uh, he's gonna just crush us, apparently. Okay, so this can happen. <laughs> it's pretty unlucky, unlucky but uh, yeah, this is what we have to work with. There we go, thank you. <laughs> so this is a boss skip. And I don't have uh, enough time to explain it. We are collecting the second cartridge, which is jump cart. Gives us a second jump and also a dash that we can chain around like this. Up. 
And um, I'm going to do a very complicated trick with it right now. And I did it. That's awesome. It's really hard to do. It's called SD storage. So normally you're supposed to be able to only dash once and then uh, you have to touch the ground to regen your dash, be able to dash again, right? But um, so basically how it works is that the game stores a value that says how long you can dash. And it's like fuel. You consume it when you dash and you get it back when you touch the ground or touch a wall. And so normally when using a dash you would consume it all at once. But uh, what happened here is that we switched cartridge mid-dash and that stops fuel consumption. And uh, that means that if you go back to the jump cart after that, you still have some fuel left over, which means that you can dash again. And uh, obviously it's not intended. Um, but yeah, if we keep doing that repeatedly, we can fly around for a while. Uh, we cannot fly around forever, however, because uh, every time we do it, we still end up consuming a little bit of fuel. But yeah, it's a really interesting uh, tech. Um, in that, you know, the faster you do it, the more fuel you're gonna end up with, and so the more times you can theoretically chain it. Oop. Okay, it's fine. But uh, if you try to do it too fast, you will end up uh, missing an input and dying. So yeah, uh, really hard to master, really hard to perform, as you can probably tell by now, as I'm failing this left and right. Um, but yeah, I'm going to rely on this to clear these next couple of levels. I'm losing a bunch of time here. It's fine, it's... It's a hard trick, sometimes you don't get it. And it, look li it looks like it is, uh, you know, game breaking because of how we are able to fly around and ignore the level. But uh, it's not something you can use in a lot of levels, actually. Throughout the run, it's, uh, if you do it perfectly, I think you save uh, about 20 to 30 seconds, something like this, so it's not like you have to master it to be able to speedrun the game. And uh, right now we are in the first glitch chase sequence, so we are chased by the glitch, and we have to run away fast enough that we don't get eaten by the glitch. Uh, as a speedrunner, I'm not too worried about that, I'm fi I think we are going to be just fine. And um, and yeah, um, after that we will come up to the second boss. The second boss is called the Tesla Coil. And um, what I forgot to mention here is that um, there's no RNG in the game except for bosses. So the Tesla Coil is going to perform one of three possible attacks. And uh, we are going to hope for one that is not too slow. So let's see what we get here. Okay, this is not too bad. And um, once it finishes its attack, it's be it becomes vulnerable. You can uh, dash into the glass dome to break it. Normally it's supposed to take three cycles, but depending on the angle uh, of your dash, you can trick the game into thinking you touched a wall and so it will give you back your dash and you can repeatedly dash into the, the dome like this and break it in one cycle. And we are done with the boss, I'm going to explain the next world called LCD. LCD introduces us to a new type of blocks called ink blocks. The ink blocks are, uh, can belong in either the normal dimension or the ink dimension. And uh, the next cartridge that we are going to pick up right now is um, the ink cartridge. It's uh, going to allow us to toggle between normal dimension and the ink dimension. And toggling into ink dimension makes these normal dimension ink blocks disappear like this. And um, conversely makes the ink dimension ink blocks appear. And so it's a bit complicated, but the 
What you have to understand is that you have to toggle back and forth between dimensions to make obstacles disappear and uh, to make useful stuff appear. Like walls and platforms. And so it's like a puzzle platformer. It's um, really like a collection of puzzles throughout the whole world where you are actually intended to use only the ink cartridge to go through. And uh, the reason why these levels are going to look like they are missing something is that we are... It's not something you would notice in a normal playthrough, but you can actually switch to jump cart and skip most of the puzzles. So that's what we are doing right now. Um, it's a bit like cheating, but it's fine, don't worry about it. And so, yeah, you might have some trouble understanding what's going on here with all the toggles and stuff. Uh, it's really one of these things that is hard to wrap your head around it. Uh, even when you play, right, it's, it gets... Um, it takes a while to get used to it. A little bit of a trick here. I did it. It's fine. And... Um, and yeah, what I'm doing here mostly is just um, toggle to make obstacles disappear and then fly over everything I can at once with the jump cart. And I don't like this level. This is the only level in the game that I don't like, but I'm full. This is, this is really good. Usually I would die here just because the level is so boring. <laughs> Um, we are already approaching the end of these levels, but here, this is where I found the SD storage strat, because the goal happens to be pretty much on top of the start. Okay, and so it's really fast to just use SD storage to, to fly over everything. And uh, time for the boss now. The boss is called the Quartz Crystal, and we have to defeat it by carrying these uh, prisms from the bottom of the room to the top. And so the prisms can spawn either in the normal dimension or the ink dimension. Uh, we always want them to spawn in the normal dimension because uh, when they do, we can carry them with the jump cartridge, and so it's much faster. But we got all four in the ink dimension, unfortunately. It's fine, it was fast enough anyways. So yeah, very unlucky boss fight here. But yeah, all boss, all bosses have these uh, random mechanics, except for the first one, but I guess because of the skip that has a chance to fail, we actually added in the, <laughs> the random mechanics into it. Uh, this is the final cartridge that we are going to see in the 80% run. Uh, it's much easier to understand, it allows you to fly around for a few seconds and regens when you touch the ground or a wall, much like the jump cart. And now we are in the firewall, which explains all the fire, right? Uh, but don't worry about it, uh, as they say, this is fine. And uh, yeah, not too much to explain um, around the voltage cart, except for these pools here. They are considered walls until you fly into them, and uh, when flying into them you can um, you know, you can swim fr freely through them, change direction and stuff. So they kind of look like the green blocks in Celeste, in some ways. Um, this is a shortcut here, that looks pretty cool, I love it. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this world is where the game starts becoming really hard, casually at least. In the speed one, it's not too hard, I guess. Well, this level is hard, but I did I did it on the first try, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, the in the speed one, it's pretty much um, you know you don't have to think too much about it. It's mindless, and. Um, yeah, this level has a shortcut that also looks cool, I think. Right, now... 
Okay, and the next one is usually pretty mindless, but I always go for a stupid strat that's called the hole-in-one strat, but I'm going to miserably fail, of course, because it's so hard. Let's go for it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I ran out of fuel here. Um, so, this strat, it's... Um, it basically makes you fly over the whole level and then enter through a small window that's right next to the goal, right here. And um, and yeah, it makes you skip the whole level, right? But it actually doesn't save any time over the normal strat that I did as a backup here. I always go for it anyways because I like it, but that's dumb. Too bad that I missed it. Uh, this particular level is really hard usually, but you know, it's one of these things that we really don't mind in the speedrun. We are used to it, and I say that, and I die, obviously. <laughs> it's always like that. Um, oh my god, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to say about this world. But yeah, there are also other categories of the game that I run, uh, like uh, the all onigiri category. It's really something else. Um, but yeah, we are in the second glitch chase sequence. The this one has uh, some rubber banding mechanics, meaning that the the glitch will. Um, accelerate when it's not on the screen and slow down when it's close enough to us. Uh, this level in particular is really scary. I think it's the scariest one on this category because it has a lot of these yeah, tight turns that are really easy to fail. It's really tight movements with the voltage cart. Sometimes it can get really hard to control. And also this level is really long, so it ends up wasting a ton of time when you die. And usually when you die once, you will die three times, four times, five times. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like losing your focus a little bit. So let's hope we can at least go through it this time. Okay, we are fine. This one is much easier. And it's actually the last level of the firewall. And so next we are coming up to the boss called the Blacklister. So the Blacklister is a giant eye wall thing. And you have to fly into the eye with voltage card to damage it. And you are stuck in this giant pool that spans across the whole screen. Um, but right now we are going to damage the boss before the fight even starts and that skips the phase because the eye starts in an open state and um, yeah it's doing one of three possible attacks much like the previous uh, Tesla coil boss and right now we get the slow one so this attack every time it comes out every time it comes out it wastes 10 seconds so that's pretty unfortunate, but at least we didn't get it twice. And the last attack is always going to be the same. This one. Um, this boss is really, really easy to go through when you get used to it, when you are used to it. And even casually, I think it's an easy boss. But anyways, we are done with the firewall. We are going to enter, to enter the final world of the game called the core. And we won't get another cartridge for the core. Instead, we are expected to use all four of our cartridges to go through the levels. And uh, it has this um, corrupted world kind of uh, theme to it. So a lot of these message boxes with weird text on them. And I'm going to have to explain the <laughs> this trick uh, that I'm going to perform here. Oops. Okay. That was not ideal, but... Yeah, so this trick 
is a combination of two texts that we recently found called the metaphor zip and the wall plug and I'm going to have to explain all that uh, while also going through these very hard levels so bear with me <laughs> it's going to be quite hard for me but metaphor zip again right, ha right here twice even so metaphor zip allows us to zip into and um, you know it, it allows us to zip into these walls and sometimes it will also allow us to get back in bounds like we did in that second one but in the first one um, that was not possible because of the arrangement of the blocks uh, it works by uh, dashing and jumping into a corner at the same time and it will only work with the message box blocks for some reason because their collision system is different I don't know why um, but yeah my point is that on the first one we could not um, get out of the message box so we were stuck inside and um, that means we had to rely on another trick called the wall plug as I said and the wall plug uh, lets us exploit the the way the goal pulls onto your cable in order to grab the goal through a wall through the ceiling in that case and uh, the way this works the way we did it is grab the ceiling near the goal and uh, then switch to another cartridge which detaches the cable and because um, the cable is also being pulled by the goal that makes it actually clip through the ceiling and once the cable is through the ceiling we just have to move around to make it connect to the goal and finish the level. Um, that's how it works basically it's a bit more complicated than that on that first instance because it's a complex one it's a, actually a, a variant um, but yeah that's the basics and these uh, core levels are really really hard casually and even for the speedrun they are really tense and I have to focus a lot on them uh, especially for this one. Oh, whoops okay yeah I'm going to die a few times on these levels and every time you die on these levels it wastes really a ton of time because of how long they are but yeah casually you would die dozens of times on every single one of them <laughs> yeah as I said it's, just, it's not easy let's go for it one more time and then I'm going to if I fail it back up on an easier variant okay it's fine I did it cool cool so I'm going to use the metaphor zip one more time here this is the last instance of metaphor zip and uh, it will also be followed up by a wall plug okay <laughs> on this one it's kind of hard to get to the to the other side but it still saves uh, a few seconds I think six, six seconds if you do it optimally so that's still very much worth, worth it and the level itself is really hard too so you know it's still worth it except when you die so much <laughs> it's fine I'm going to get through eventually Okay, so same thing here, we have to use the wall plug to grab the goal through the ceiling here because we are stuck inside. Um, but yeah, this is now the final platforming level of the game. And I'm going to focus a little bit because I already died a bunch and I don't want to be too late. 
Okay, nice. Okay, so now these levels are... These next two levels are storytelling levels. And uh, right after that will come the last boss. So... What is happening here is that the glitch is going to try to convince us to join him instead of defeating him. And um, in this uh, next next level here, we are going to meet with him and he's gonna break the fourth wall by telling us that we are in a game and that the only way to to break out of the game loop and not get stuck here forever is to join him instead of defeating him. And um, this is the final boss fight against the glitch, obviously. And so it works in phases where you are locked into a specific cartridge. Here yeah, I'm locked into the cable cart. And um, so you have to survive the attack uh, using that cartridge only. And then it's always going to do this black hole type of attack where it tries to pull you towards it. And um, once that is done, you can um, fill up the meter, the, <laughs> the progress bar here, and um, progress to the next phase. And I was too focused on that and ended up dying. So this boss casually is really, really hard. Um, for the speedrun, it's not too bad unless you lose your focus. When you lose your focus, you're going to die a bunch here. And um, the fight is two minutes long, so you can end up wasting minutes and minutes if you're not too careful. Um, but yeah, second phase is about these flying uh, glitch blocks, bouncing everywhere. But I am through this time. Uh, Third phase is going to be that plus some tentacles that we have to kite, basically. Okay. And so to optimize the boss, we have to stay close the the plug that matches the cart that we are locked in. So it's something you always have to aware of and the, end, the last phase is this laser that we have to kite around as well and uh, it looks like we are through and so we defeat the boss which means that we are going into this uh, blue screen of death type dimension and then um, we are asked to choose between blue pill and red pill so join the glitch or defeat the glitch I always go for destroy the glitch because I don't know why it doesn't uh, make any difference anyways. Uh, for the purpose of the speedrun at least. This is time right now. So it only changes the ending. It really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, that was uh, Super Cable Boy any percent. 3144 is not great. I died a bunch in the core levels, sadly. But that's fine. I was hoping for a sub 30 for our friends. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the run. I hope you liked the game. I think the game is absolutely awesome. It's really it's really the definition of a hidden gem for me. Nobody knows about it yet. It is so well made. Uh, the music is really cool. The graphics look cool as well. I mean, have you seen these shaders? The especially the water reflection ones that we can see in this ending. They look really gorgeous, I think. And um, there, um, there are a bunch of hidden secret levels that we didn't get to see in the any percent part. Um, that provide you with, uh, you know, additional challenge and also uh, some pretty cool mechanics that they have too. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you for watching and uh, have a good one. Bye.